Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome back to our captured vehicle from the Lightning Hoods, the Tectonic. So after a lot of thinking, I have decided we are going to be keeping this poor, poor vehicle as one of our captured resource harvesters. We have quite a few of them now, and the collection seems to just keep on growing. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go into build mode, and I'm going to quickly gut out all of the RTGs, at least most of them, because we do not need this much power to run a couple of resource harvesters, and each of these is worth 1,500 resource. So essentially, we can hopefully get a second tank just by gutting out some of the basic energy production. Now, off camera, I have also been working on the Abaddon. I've decided I wasn't really happy with the minigun variants we were currently using, although it was quite effective. Similar to the 500mm version, it was very unreliable. So what I've done is I have made a 250mm version, which does pretty much the same thing as the 500mm, but far far more reliable. Less burst damage, but it never reloads at any stage. After 10 minutes of testing, it was still firing at 90 rounds per minute, and it does a fair bit of damage, so I will be unveiling that in the first battle. And sadly, that came from a video which ended up getting scrapped, because apparently that's just what I do at the moment. It was a really dull video of me testing out different types of uh, turrets, different types of cannon, and in the end, that's the one I went with. Okay, that's all looking good. Let's go ahead and repair the resource gatherers as well. No, that's the laser. No, no, no. Oh, that's kind of sickening, but yes, just... If you're easily seasick, feel free to look away at least at this point. Thumbs up for seasickness! Yeah, that's how you should hit the like button. Come on, give me the last one. There we are. Uh, four will probably be enough to completely harvest this section over here, which only has a growth of five. Okay, so, pull all, and the Abaddons are going to be converted to the Abaddon 250, of course, represented by its gauge. All good. And where's the tectonic at the moment? There it is. Let's put it in place and see if it works. And whilst that's going on, we need to prepare to be attacked. What is coming this way? A lot of small craft. Now apparently the Ravager has actually been updated in a tiny little patch recently, so I'm really curious to see what they've done with that. Uh, shall we repair the blood letter as well? Yeah, we have the resources for it, so everyone get repaired. Let's make sure that was converted. Yes, it was. Sadly, they do keep the name after they get retrofitted. Why aren't you repairing? Am I in pause mode or something? That's weird. That should repair. Oh, because I wasn't selecting the whole thing. Herp de derp. There we are. Now it will be repairing. The most perfect test subjects are those who are willing to throw themselves at you to face oblivion. So here we are with the White Flyers, who were attacking our resource zone yet again. It seems like the White Flyers are easily the fastest in producing tanks, and the most aggressive of any faction I've fought so far. Which, honestly, I didn't think was really a thing. I didn't think that each faction has their own speed in which they gather resources and are able to fabricate vehicles. And I still don't believe that completely, but it really does seem like the White Flyers constantly have a supply of tanks to throw at me. We really need to find one of their resource zones very soon and take it from them. As soon as we do that, the attacks will halve against us. So, of course, we'll put all of the Krulls at the back, the Abaddons will go at the front, and the Bloodletter will probably be killed in a matter of moments, but will go over here anyway. Okay, everything is ready. We'll be on the Abaddon to test out the new weapon. I've decided for this test we are going to be using fragment shells. I probably won't keep these shells, but I think it's a good test, considering that we've been using frag for everything else. We may as well use it in the new turret as well. So against us we have the Ravager, the Cataphract. We have three of those by the looks of things. We have the Forsaken, we have the Slayer, and we have another Forsaken. So let's see how the new Ravager looks. I'm really hoping they've kept the cram cannons. 
There we are, the blood letter has just fired, and so has our new version of the Abaddon. So that's the Slayer, up there in the air, that's the Forsaken, and you are the other Forsaken, which means you are the new Ravager. Ooh, I like how they've done these little tracks on the side, that's really cute. Two spin blocks on the front, a new shield, and I don't believe they have the cram can anymore. But they do have a lot of thrusters, that's definitely going to be faster than the old version, if nothing else. Okay then, begin the fighting. Shells there hitting the back of the Cataphract, doing quite a bit, now aiming at the Forsaken. One shell hit the target and instantly knocked out the weapon, that was pretty darn good. The aiming's a little bit off. Okay, there we are. Abaddon versus the new Ravager. Not all that much damage being dealt, but the weapon again has been mostly neutralised. A lot of aiming now against this Abaddon. Not sure who, who he's trying to aim at, honestly, but obviously swapping targets. That Abaddon apparently as fast as the Ravager. Ah, that's clever. Okay, this Ravager has double shields, which means this, by the way, is the counter to Fragment Shells. This is the only real counter to Fragment Shells, having two shields, because the first shield de uh, deflects the shell, kind of derped up there in my speech, deflects the shell, thus causing it to detonate. The fragments then go forwards, which then hit the second shield, thus nullifying the shell. Even the Blood Letter would have an issue with that. So, maybe a bad test then, using that particular shell type. As you can see, the fragments are bouncing everywhere. Incoming missiles, though, thankfully, from the two Krulls, and there it goes. Goodbye. Apparently very vulnerable from the back. A few deaths over here, not that I can really see what's going on because of the rain. And by the looks of things, that was all because of the new Abaddon, or at least for the majority it was. Swapping targets, that's why it's not currently firing. Yeah, that's pretty good. Look how much armor that's taking away each shot. And look at how much damage it's able to take. So although we have lowered the damage, that's completely obvious. It has made the Abaddon even tankier. Because now, even the turret is heavily protected. Oh, that shell went right through the Forsaken, and the Forsaken has been downed. I'm not overly sure just yet about this. I think the minigun variant is still better, although we need to make it more protected. Or maybe the enemy are just getting better at dealing with this. Oh, that went... Okay, never mind. These shells are fine. Look at that. It just eradicated half of it. There's the other Abaddon now firing away. I think the important thing to note is that all of those enemies were fighting this single Abaddon and it looks like it hasn't took a scratch. Extra layers of heavy armor, increasing the armor value of the outside armor, a turret cap which is essentially a solid lump of metal, and more armor around the ammunition and AI. This is the tankiest version and, like I say, probably the most reliable. Although. I don't think the frag shells are good enough. When I was trying out the heat shells, hess shells, and regular explosive, they tended to do better than that. It's kind of weird, but fragment shells only seem to work when they're when they're used very specifically, very, very, very fast fire rates. Although then everything else works as well, even flak. I don't know. Either way, all of you, could you please repair? And let's get ready to defend again, because I think I saw an enemy moving around. Maybe we should move the Blood Letter group down, start to go through the Lightning Hoods. If we go through this way, there's no way the White Flyers can sneak past me, so let's do that. Carnage, you go this way with the Defiler, and you, for now, just play defense. Well, a little bit in the future, because sadly the footage I just gathered from the last few battles was really, really bad. Certainly nothing worthwhile to put into the video. I have decided we are going on the offensive, because we are now at that point we can't really lose. Even if we were using faction vehicles against them, we are getting such an immense amount of resource per second, there is no way they can beat us even in sheer numbers. And now we have 
found the enemy resource zone, we are about to cripple the White Flyer's production. We did have one attack from the Lightning Hoods, but sadly they kind of glitched out in the mountains, and they pretty much killed themselves. It was pretty boring to watch, surprisingly. So we're going to go over here to their resource zone. We're going to capture this with the Condemned, the two Executioner turrets and the Bloodstone Obelisk, and then we're going to find their true base. By the end of the episode, I want to find both of their bases. I've also extended this down a little bit. Slowly but surely. Into a battle which will hopefully actually end up in the video this time, we are fighting against a Beholder, along with a Reaver and a whole host of the usual enemies. But now, we are using regular high explosive shells. In one of the battles I clipped out, I was using heat shells, but it just didn't seem to do the job overly well. So let's see if pure explosives will do better. Good, all in combat mode, aiming already, fantastic, and the Abaddon seems to be attracting quite a bit of attention, at least from the Beholder. Everything else seems to be going for the Bloodletter, as always. Missile's not doing all that much, that's great, incoming explosive rounds. Now the Beholder does have pretty good shields, so I'm not sure how good these are actually going to be. It's hard to tell when the damage is being lagged out. That doesn't seem to be doing all that great, honestly. The 500mm were definitely better. And all of the enemies have gone towards the Bloodletter, as always. Oh, that shell just went straight into the enemy, through this hole, and detonated in the middle. What a fantastic shell. Slow motion right now, of course, which is a little bit annoying. Yeah, the shields from the Beholder are completely nullifying a lot of these shots. This is where the frag versions would be better. Okay, one good hit there. It seems like if it does hit the target, a lot of metal is chunked off. It's just hitting the target with so many shields. I really don't want to go back to the minigun variants, but it does seem like that may be the best option if I armor up the turret cap a little bit more. So sacrificing maybe 100 rounds per minute for a bit of extra armor on the turret cap. I can't have the Abaddon be as vulnerable as they were before. Oh dear! Almost being hit by melee then, that Abaddon was almost killed! The Bloodletter, of course, is now dead. Thankfully the Abaddon is absorbing shot after shot, so nothing bad going on over there. Over here, two of the enemy vehicles have slammed into each other, doing some serious damage. Apparently one of the Krolls spawned in on the mountain, upside down. Uh-oh. Abaddon? Abaddon? Abaddon! Oh, thank- Okay, so very, very luckily, it hit the side there, not on the actual rams. Now, this is the one I'm on top of, so I could easily manually control this turret for a second. Hello? No, 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 let me control- Yeah, there we go, the actual turret, not just the missiles at the back. Never mind, go back to what you were doing before, Red Sky at Night. That was creepy for a moment. Okay, the Beholder has now been killed. The rest of the enemies... Okay, there we are. The Abaddon is focusing on... Is this the Reaver? Or is this... Yeah, that's the... Oh, look at that shield. That is so annoyingly perfect. Completely negating that. One shell did go through then. Did quite a bit on the inside. Yeah, I'm not happy with these shells at all. I think either the 500mm variant or the minigun variant would be better. In testing, this turret was fantastic. In practice, it's just not as good as the other weapons. I think I'll be putting them back as the minigun variant and then what I'll be doing is armoring up the turret cap. I'll do that after this battle. Yeah, the shells aren't bad, it's just... Shields are so good! Still, reliable damage though. Reliable was reliable. One enemy is apparently left. Hello there, Spike. How many have I lost? Just the bloodletter, okay. One missile at the back there, causing it to go into a death spin. 
A few more missiles hit inside, and... There we go, two damaged. Well, I can hardly see a thing right now, it's very, very dark, so I'm going to pull all, I'm going to do some repair work, and then I'm going to reconvert these back into the minigun variants, or perhaps just the 500mm variants. Not too sure. The Beholder and the Chaos. Let's see how they do then. Let's put the blood letter as far back as possible, and let's see if we can get a repeat of the previous episode. The two Abaddon will go along the side. The Chaos is going straight for the blood letter, so is the Beholder. Incoming a 500mm shell against the Beholder, and... Yep, shields are still doing very well against Explosive, although that one did a lot of damage to the inside as well. The blood letter is now aiming at the front. Incoming missiles. Okay, the Chaos is about to catch up with the blood letter. Will it be able to slide on top, or is it going to be meleeed? Sadly... Meleeed. Well, there goes the blood letter. Actually getting through the shield for the most part and doing quite a bit. Sadly a miss there, a lot removed from the back, a lot removed from the side, and two damaged. Yeah, it seems like either the minigun variant or this variant will be the better. Now where's the chaos going? Have we lost one of our Krull? No, they're both a little bit damaged, but not lost. They're there dancing together. Of course. Oh, and I have been destroyed myself! Okay, apparently that was by the Partle Cannon. One of the 500mm shells now hitting the front. Sadly, these shells are a little bit slower than usual, so they are a little bit inaccurate. A lot of damage done there, and the front being hit! Missiles coming in from behind, hopefully taking out the engine. That's exactly where the engine is located. Stop bouncing the enemy, it keeps making me aim too high. Direct hit on the front. The spin block is still there though, sadly. Although it seems like the Abaddon can now actually outpace the enemy. That aiming is really bad. I've got to look at the detection systems after this. No, it does seem pretty good. I think it's just it's not responding well to the constant bouncing around of the enemy. It keeps changing its aim. Because when it actually aims, it hits perfectly. It wouldn't hit perfectly and then off. It would hit around the target constantly. So... Thoughts. That was a lot more constant in terms of the fire rate. I was really happy with that, the explosions were very cool, and to be fair, we were fighting against the most heavily armoured of the White Flyers, so I'm happy with that. Plus, I'm happy with the large explosions, so I think I will stick with this version of the Abaddon for now, even if it has had to sacrifice a bit of armour to get that constant fire rate. Also, you're missing a bit of barrel. Well, it turns out I'm a little bit derpy and a little bit absent-minded. I know, I know, a lot of you are very, very surprised by that. But it turns out I had forgot to add a head to the shells, which makes them far, far less accurate. So that is why we were missing half of our shots. Hopefully in the next battle, it'll be all better. On an unrelated side note, the Tectonic is finally harvesting resource. It took a long time to get here because sadly the max speed of this damaged vehicle is 2. Which is very, very slow. It seems like the Lightning Hoods aren't quite out of the game just yet. They are attacking us near our resource zone I was just at, the one with the Tectonic, with the most adorable looking flyer ever, and of course, another Lux. Now this is the vehicle with all of those lovely missiles and the ability to both create and deploy these smaller drones, which I think are just missile drones. So, let's see how this will go then. Hopefully, our cram tank will actually be able to do something this time. 
So many lasers all being fired at once, and all at the cram tank. You mean, mean things. Combination of bloodletter shells and now swarm missiles are heading towards the enemy Lux, which apparently has a very powerful anti-missile system. Can you please stop shooting the cram tank? It's the only one I actually want to see fire. A little bit of self-harm there by the enemy. The cram tank is aiming as a flyer for some reason, so I'm assuming the target prioritization has been damaged because that definitely doesn't allow it to target flyers. Swarm missiles incoming, doing very little damage to the back. Finally firing, but sadly firing at an airborne target. The chance of this hitting is very low, but please hit anyway. No, just missing. That would have been so glorious. A hail of missiles coming from the Krull, downing one of the flyers. The cram tank is still just about alive, and apparently the enemy little drone ships which just died by hitting its ally, can heal each other. The blood letter, of course, has been downed. Still firing at the flyer. Gosh darn it, cram tank. Oh, please hit, please hit, please hit, please hit. Oh, that was glorious. That was so worth you aiming at the wrong target. Oh, I love cram cannons when they actually hit. It's so amazing. I, I need to use cram more. I will. In the next campaign, I will use cram cannons more. They're just so satisfying when they actually hit the target. Without the bloodletter supplying the vast majority of our damage, we are actually sl Well, we are winning, just very, very slowly. Thankfully, neither of the laser vehicles are aiming at our carnage. Apparently still aiming at the flyer, even though it's been downed and missing horribly. The swarm of missiles coming from the Krill and hitting one of their side vehicles. The Lux can take such a beating. It took all of those shots from the Bloodletter until the Bloodletter got killed by the Lux and now it's taking missile after missile after missile. And I really need to look at the target prioritization of the Cram Cannon, of the Defiler. Because right now it's just kind of not aiming at anything I think it should be aiming at. It really should be aiming at this. Since it should be going after size and not speed or height. So many missiles. So little damage done. This thing is far more tanky than it should be. I think the cram tank is aiming at this guy. Once again, incoming missiles proving themselves to be very low damage dealers. All of those missiles, and that's all they do. Oh, cram cannon shells have been shot and missed the target. Not that I can really see what's going on now, thanks to the fog once again rolling in. Yeah, this group needs more damage. It needs perhaps an Abaddon with the minigun variant or another bloodletter so after the first one dies the next one can fire because this is taking far too long. Oh, a cram cannon shell to the front and then to the inside, finishing off the enemy. That was a fun battle. The cram tank actually proving itself to be very, very tanky. Well done, Defiler. You win. Okay, so... I am very confused by this carnage, and you may be wondering why I'm confused about this carnage. This carnage should not be anywhere near here. These two carnage are from the group up north, and apparently I forgot to despawn them when I was doing some checks on this group down south, and because their AI likes them to stick together, they travelled the entire distance to us. Which also proves that if you're actually spawned into the world, you can't aggravate the tiles. That is really odd. I just saw them and I thought I was in the wrong place, but apparently not. Just a little side note, which I found amusing. I find very simple things amusing. Here we go then, versus the enemy resource zone. I've quickly skipped a battle from their defenders, because sadly pretty much nothing happened. Now, one problem I do have is if we spawn these guys in, so I can show you, in fact, by that damage, it kind of hints it, the terrain is really, really uneven around here. It's essentially a giant hill. 
Now, this is fine for most of my craft, but with the blood letter, it can't actually change its height depending on the terrain. As you can see here, it's trying to go down even though it's already on the ground. So what I'm going to need to do is change the PID system and make it go to about maybe 120 rather than just 20. As soon as I've done that, we'll go out and we will start the fight, taking over the White Flyer Resource Zone. Now, what I could do in the future is use control blocks to change the PID depending on the ground. Although I have been told by a lot of people in the know that apparently the PID systems are getting an update somewhat soon in which they will be able to detect and change on the ground rather than just a generic level which would be very, very good and would be far less complex than using all sorts of control blocks to change all of my settings constantly depending on the land I'm on. And that looks like it's going to be a bit too high. Okay, a little bit lower than that and then we'll get into the fight. Here we go versus the White Flyer's base. So we need to keep pretty much everything on this sort of section because that's the ramp. The Abaddon can get nice and close. I'm really hoping they won't fall off, but there's a real high possibility they will. Uh, you can go at the back as well, and then the blood letter, let's put it directly in the middle just so it can fire straight away. So there's the condemned, the obelisk, and the- wait, wasn't there other things last time? Oh, there we are, there's the executioner turret. Okay, I was a little bit confused there. I thought there was an extra turret, I couldn't see it, it was behind the line. This is going to be such a weird fight. And so the battle has started, and the blood letter instantly took a hit and became completely unstable. So we have the Executioner turret here, which is an adorable little advanced cannon turret. It seems to be shooting regular kinetic shells. We have the Condemned, which is currently being attacked by everything. We have the other Executioner turret, and then we have the Obelisk, which is an obelisk. It doesn't seem to have any weaponry or anything else. It's just essentially a giant lump of metal, so not particularly hard to kill. Oh, lovely. Two of the Abaddon shots there, doing loads of damage. Actually, more than the Bloodletter, surprisingly. A few Bloodletter shells are going through and hitting the obelisk. The turret has been hit by an Abaddon shell, and now the Bloodletter, a couple more Abaddon shells, and it's gone down. That Abaddon sadly missing. Yeah, I am really happy with this version of the Abaddon, and I think one Abaddon may have fell off. Bye, Abaddon! Thankfully, it's not quite a sheer drop. Only the Obelisk now remains. And so it sinks into its base. Well, that's rather sad. And a victory for the Lathrixian Legion. And one more resource zone for us. So now where's our satellite? Let's move the satellite all the way over here and see what we can see. You guys just go there, I'll attach some resource harvesters to you in a second. Either way though, that has now halved the production of the White Flyers. They attacked us three times during this video since I cut quite a lot of the battles. I just thought it was... Ooh, what's this? Aha! Hello! A good call to tell you how many times they have attacked, since there's a good chance I cut a lot of those battles. So, there is a lot of stuff, but that is the White Flat, the Lightning Hood's main base. As you can probably tell, I'm a little bit tired right now. I've had a bit of a weird time trying to record at the moment. My microphone broke, I repaired it, I'm getting a new one soon. My computer went a bit funny, but everything is now fine. And so I've basically spent all day trying to fix things and then try to record and then scrapping a video. It's been a weird day, but either way, that was a lot of fun. We've got all the way now into the White Flayer's territory. We have found the main base of the Lightning Hoods, and so what we can do is get our main group from here, pull them around, and they can go towards the Lightning Hoods. These can now go south and hopefully find the White Flyers base very, very soon. In the next episode, we may end the campaign. If all goes well, we are victorious in one more episode, and I think 
it is about time that this series has ended. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.